I honestly felt pretty spoiled riding the bullet train and gazing at the wonderful scenery throughout the countryside. We were officially in the Kansai region, a quieter, more rural area of the country, and a nice contrast from the hyper-urbanized Kanto region where Tokyo is. Before you eat a meal, especially at a restaurant, you're provided a wet wipe or a cloth to wipe your hands down with, which is what you saw me doing. We had about three hours to Kyoto, so I thought I'd chow down on a bento box. Some pork cutlets with fried rice and mixed vegetables were surprisingly tasty for coming out of what was essentially a TV dinner box. These bento boxes are quite popular all over Japan. We passed through Nagoya, which is the third biggest city in the country. I will definitely have to visit this city when I visit again. Even from the train view, it looks absolutely gorgeous. I was quite shocked to see how many solar panels were on people's houses all along the train tracks. I can't imagine something like this happening in America with the stigma against renewable clean energy. After about a three hour ride, we arrived in Kyoto. Well, we made it to Kyoto. Now to go sightseeing in the old capital. Our new Airbnb house was just around the corner from the station. Unlike Fuji, this house is pretty warm for springtime, even without the heaters. I also had the chance to wash my clothes in the washer-dryer combo. This took two loads since it was a smaller appliance. Again. Hiromi was explaining to us that the green lines on the floor of a Japanese house are meant to be avoided. Okay. Yeah, we're not supposed to step on the lines. Just like, don't step on a crack, you'll break your mother's back. Cute. And Sean shared some sweets that she bought from the Kyoto station. Mm. It felt more at home knowing that there was a PlayStation in the living room. This is actually the only time I got to play video games the entire trip. I had a few minutes to spare before we went out on the town, so I got a taste of Genshin Impact. After settling into the new house, it was time to hit the Aeon Mall to get our hair done. I'm about to go get my hair styled and colored. I had some small talk with my hairstylist in Japanese, and she was very patient with my speaking. I couldn't get any footage of her working with me, but she did a fantastic job. I really like what they did with my hair. This is a really good color on me. We walked through the mall for a little bit, and I came across some beautiful paintings of pagodas around Kyoto. I am assuming there was an art contest earlier. We also ate at a conveyor belt sushi bar. You'll order your sushi, and it's delivered to you right on the belt. Of course, I couldn't forget that sake either. The mall had a candy store in it, so I thought I'd pick up some Skittles inside a bullet train. For more than a thousand years, Kyoto was the long-time capital of Japan. It was in 1868 at the end of the Edo period when they changed it to Tokyo. So this city has a lot of old landmarks and traditions that have been preserved throughout the community. One of those traditions being an authentic tea ceremony, or shado. They didn't allow videos, but they did permit photos, so I'll share some with you here. 
It's a very ritualistic ceremony, which is why videos are not allowed. It also felt really comfy dressing in full kimono. That tea ceremony was quite the experience. Okay. If any of you come to Kyoto, okay. definitely do Shado. As I said before, this city is riddled with old temples and landmarks. I don't remember the name of this specific temple, but I paid my respects and rang the bell. I told Hiromi that I had to go to a music store as long as I was here, so I went to Koizumi Ethnic Instruments, where they had everything from sitars, to kalimbas, to shamisens, and more. I decided to get myself a Chinese tongue drum. Hiromi said she had to visit a Bumboguya, a stationery store. Brush stroke writing is a very old tradition in Japanese culture. It is how all three of their alphabets were born, including the old Chinese alphabet, kanji. This is one of Hiromi's favorite hobbies. Time to go see some historical temples, shrines, and other things. Kenkakuji Temple, aka the Golden Pavilion, was waiting for us on the northern end of the city. This is a very historical Zen temple that conveys the dawn of the Kitayama culture. Dating all the way back to 1397, Yoshimitsu, the third shogun of the Ashikaga shogunate, built this palace. It became the center of politics for a very long time and also served as a welcoming place for the emperors of Japan. Unlike the subways in Tokyo, you actually have room to breathe in the train stations of Kyoto. At this point, I knew the rush was officially over. Considering that Kyoto is a critique city in the Pokemon games, let's go see if we can find the Burnt Tower and the Tin Tower, if they even exist. Walking to the next attraction, I noticed a lot of foreigners wearing kimono. If I wore kimono here in America, I would be cancelled for cultural appropriation. But in Kyoto, there are kimono rentals marketed to foreigners. At first I thought I was walking through a nature center here. Upon closer look, it was actually a bamboo forest. I had no idea bamboo grew to be that high. It's a very unique tree with a strong fiber that makes the wood extremely sturdy, making it perfectly ideal for homes and boats too. It sounds like metal when you knock on it. My ear pain was starting to catch up to me, and I was thinking about going to see a doctor. All the clinics were full for at least a week, so I had to press on.
The following day had rain to it, making it the perfect day for some indoor attraction. We stopped at a McDonald's for breakfast so I could taste test the sausage egg McMuffin with hash browns and an orange juice. It tasted exactly the same as back home. I'm surprised I made it out of this place sober. We arrived at the Sake Museum. My favorite story that I learned in this exhibit is how America traded baseball for sake. You see, in 1934, the US and Japan played 18 games across this country. During that time, Babe Ruth became an instant celebrity in Japan. The Japanese may have lost every game, but they were inspired by Babe Ruth to start their own baseball league. And in return, Babe Ruth fell in love with sake and brought it back to America. We basically helped Japan spread sake to the rest of the world. Quite the cool exchange, if I may say so. And of course, we got some souvenir sake cups for some free samples. I didn't realize that they're not shots. Cheers. There were some sakuras blooming, but it was still a little too early in the season. We ended up taking a train down to Nara, about 20 miles away from Kyoto. It would be here that we would visit the Todaiji Temple, the largest wooden building in the world and home to the world's largest bronze-casted Buddha statue standing about 50 feet tall with a royal throne to make him even taller. The temple was located in historic Nara Park. It is in this park where wild deer live alongside humans without fear. You can pet them and even feed them too. I don't remember the name of this restaurant, but it felt very millennial. Another kneel down place with the kneeling upstairs. It was about time I tried some quality udo. And for dessert, a cherry blossom flavored boba tea. It had been around halfway through the trip and I was feeling a bit homesick and a bit lonely. So I found an English friendly place to eat for dinner in the Kyoto Tower, Nick Stock, where all the staff spoke perfect English and I got to eat some roast beef salad. I was just happy to be able to talk in my native tongue for once. The final leg of Kyoto was spent at Mount Inari-san, 
home to the trail of over 3,000 Tory gates stretching around 5 kilometers. Tory gates serve as a portal for Shinto gods to travel between the living world and the spirit world. When walking through a Tory gate yourself, you are entering the realm of the gods. It is considered rude to walk through the center, so always make sure to enter either on the left or right side of the trail. We were short on time and energy, so we walked only about halfway and back. <laughs> Three days in Tokyo had gone by fast. While it's not nearly as big or as busy as Tokyo, there was still no way I was doing everything in the short time I was there. With five days left in the trip, we set course for Osaka, Hiromi's hometown. Hiromi said Osaka was the Chicago of Japan, and if she's right about that, then you bet I'm gonna love it. <laughs> 